Good morning, afternoon, evening, night, wherever you are. My name is Richard, and today we are going to be doing a fun mental exercise of setting up a minimum viable product-led growth setup. All right, let's dig into some theory, and then we'll get cracking with the actual tooling, which is the far more interesting part of this anyway. Okay, so first of all, composing a stack you know, let's imagine we had absolutely no restrictions. We had no C level to tell us, no, I don't like this tool. I don't want to use that, blah, blah, blah. The only limitation we have here is how easy it is to set up and do we have to pay a fortune in order to get started? We're gonna mainly try to do no code, like just keep to no code as much as possible. If there's a valid reason, we'll sure, we'll consider a little bit of code, but fundamentally, let's keep it quite simple. All right. In addition to this, let's let's just quickly talk about growth engineering. This is what I do, and this is the stuff we're going to be talking about. In a nutshell, the growth engineering is simply turning your strategy into operation, data processes, data flow, etc. I personally think of it more of a philosophy framework rather than like a function within a department. Um, the point of growth engineering is to make some of these things scalable, modular, sensible is perhaps <laughs> my favorite word here. But the point is, when you have strategy to grow, you have sales, marketing, success, other departments, how do you turn that strategy into actual operations? Fundamentally, it's, it's a creative problem-solving exercise. Now, as a principle, we're going to avoid using spreadsheets at all costs, and we're going to avoid using Zapier. I have absolutely no problems with Zapier. In fact, I love that tool. But for the purpose of these exercises, we're just not going to do it. It's, it's easy to end up in a spider web of zaps that then later on nobody knows what the hell they are. So, and then why are we not doing just marketing at a time, sales at a time, success tooling at a time? Um, to me, I, it's, it's quite simple. The, the goal of Teams is usually the same, to bring value to customers, to bring revenue to the company, boom. It's a, lot, it's a lot easier to optimize for alignment if, if the stack actually shares the context. And my personal favorite, your prospects, clients really do not care what your sales process looks like, what your measurements are, who needs to have reports, in what way. They just want value out of your product. That's about it. Okie dokie. So let's imagine our startup, our SaaS business that we'll be setting out these, these tooling, tools for. Um, our imaginary company is obviously selling software, yeah? Um, we have initial product market fit. We're starting to grow. Um, there's an app, and it's free to sign up. We, at this point, we don't really care who signs up. We just want anybody to sign up, which typically means you, you end up allowing any form of emails to be valid, right? So you don't need to have a business email. You could just sign up with a Google Mail, Yahoo, whatever. Um, Obviously, we have a website, you know, because us, the scrappy startup, we need to do marketing somehow. And in order to get product that growth, we actually need to get people into the product. In our case, we have some sort of usage-based limitations. Um, so, like, you, you can use the tool, but there's a limit to how much um, value you can get out of it before you actually have to pay. And perhaps the biggest signal for us, we know, is that when somebody adds... A credit card that's that's when we can start getting actual value well we get revenue they get value um, we also know that once there's let's say a two a combination of two features then that typically signals to us that it's a more uh, it's a client with uh, more potential um, and as a bonus at the very end of this exercise we'll we'll, we'll be tackling the whole piece of product-led growth mixed with sales because we also have a sales team and we have enterprise accounts and we know who those accounts are so how do we how do we merge product led growth with the abm approach especially when it's happening at the same time in terms of planning the stack there's there's a few few things i i like to consider uh keep in mind and then for this particular exercise we're going to set up a distributed system so our CRM is not going to be the, the source of all truth. We, we want to go a bit more. Uh, we want to have multiple components. Yeah, 
one for marketing. Maybe we'll have some sales automation. We want to have a data warehouse at some point in time. So let's start building this tech stack with keeping in mind that our CRM is not going to be the final destination for everything. What, what else do we want to do? Well, we want to enable accurate segmentation for, for automation. Well, for marketing automation, more let's say. You got your users, they sign up. How do you automate onboarding if you know when um, if you know that your your users have you know enabled those two features we talked about how do you segment them and then actually start giving them better uh, more salesy content how do you let the salesperson know that hey maybe there's someone you should talk to um, as, as, as I mentioned we'll be talking about the enterprise piece as well how do we enable uh, our sales teams to actually get product data and make it useful for them. Mm -hmm. And along the way, we're also going to explore the pros and cons of, of making these types of decisions. For example, because we have already decided that our system is going to be distributed, it's going to make HubSpot's default reporting basically useless. HubSpot, absolutely love that tool. We'll be using that as well. But it, 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 it starts going a bit cranky when you... Uh, start importing contacts from uh, from the outside world all righty let's have a look what we have here is is basically like the simple graph of what we will be building um somewhere in the heart we'll have our crm so for the purpose of this exercise we're gonna select hubspot because that will give us sales plus marketing in one go they're pretty good at that okay we obviously know that we have a website somewhere. We'll spin up a dummy website so we can practice with this and we'll be using Google Tag Manager for injecting scripts into the website. Great. Where needed, we'll use some form of workflow automation tool. Um, as I mentioned, we're not gonna use Zapier purely because it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't allow you to map the, uh, the spectrum of automations you need to do. It's all one, one thing to one thing. It's A and B, and then you have to create a separate workflow for absolutely everything. Uh, let's see, what are we gonna use for this? Probably probably go with Make. Uh, they used to be called Integromat a couple of months ago, but now they're called Make, so let's try them out. I'm pretty sure they have a sensible uh, free plan. Okay, what do we have on this side? So. At some point in time, maybe we'll talk about a sales automation platform, something like a Lem list. Obviously, the more the the, the beefier platforms like Outreach will probably not get into those because, well, we don't really have a company, um, and you kind of need that. Maybe we'll talk about a CSM platform, like a success platform, a plan hats of the world. But for now, let's, let's just ignore this side of the world. We obviously have a product and that product has a database. So where all the users are stored, where our usage data is, the signals that we wanna be extracting and make use, usable by our sales and marketing teams. This part is gonna be a bit tricky on how, how we're gonna achieve it, but you know, let's figure it out as we go along. Um, somewhere in the middle, we're gonna be using a event slinging tool. These are the traditional customer data platforms of the world. You have your segment.com, Rudderstack. We'll use something like this to basically capture the uh, sign up login events um, between our product and our CRM. We'll do that to begin with so we can get started real quick before we end up building our own data warehouse. Um, mm -mm, and let's see. Yeah, since we are moving into the world of commercial data warehouses, and I have personally seen the, the absolute value you can achieve through setting up your own data warehouse, we're gonna attempt to do something similar. Again, going, going with the idea of no code, we're, we're going to uh, gonna try to make this simple-ish. Simple um, so for that, we're gonna use Airtable. It's, it's pretty sturdy, it's got nice APIs, and most importantly, there is a reverse ETL tool that supports Airtable as a source. So, 
So, so, so. All right. Mm -mm, did I miss anything? Yeah, sure. We'll, uh, we'll add some data enrichment at some point. Uh, something like a built width type of situation. And, 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 yeah, I think this is more than enough to get started. Let's see where we get to and, uh, and uh, feel free to comment any ideas. 